Hey friends, Patrick God here. Thank you so much for dropping by and you see it on the title EF Core with Stop Procedures. This is what we want to talk about today. We'll use three Stop Procedures to where we just select some stuff, one without any parameter, then one with a parameter. And then we will also use a Stop Procedure where we are doing an update. So a little bit more complicated, but in essence, it's really, really simple, all that stuff. And that's already it. EF Core 6 using stored procedures. EF Core is limited regarding stored procedures. You will see this in the tutorial. And if you learned something and like this tutorial, I would really appreciate it if you click the like button, maybe even subscribe to my channel. And if you want to learn more about .NET and want to get these tutorials in your inbox, then maybe the newsletter is something for you because then you get these tutorials in your inbox and you will also be the first to know if there's something new coming up like a new online course, for instance, like the .NET Web Development Bootcamp, which is coming very soon. All right, so that's it. And now enjoy the tutorial. All right, let me give you some comments context here first. We've got a little web API project here already with some models in the root folder and the character controller, the fat controller. I know in the professional environment you shouldn't do that, but for this quick and dirty tutorial, well, let's just do it like that, all right? Because we want to focus on the stored procedures here with EF Core 6. So what we want to do is we've got this uh, database here, the .NET RPG database. This is from my .NET Jumpstart course. So if you want to learn more about that, please have a look at the video description for the link. And in here, what we have is, well, again, some models. For instance, we've got some users. Let's have a look here. We've got the, the user Patrick and the test user with ID one and two. And these users can have role-playing game characters. Yeah, we're building a little role-playing game in this uh, text-based role-playing game in this um, course. And you see it here, user IDs one, two, and one. And here are the characters with the name Raceland, Frodo, and Sam, and also the hit points. Tested that already, you see it here. What we wanna do is we wanna change the hit points later on. So let's just uh, reset to this to 100. And now in here, I've got some stored procedures already. So two uh, with a select, one with no parameter whatsoever, and the second one with a parameter where we just wanna get the characters of a specific user in this one here. And the first one only receive all characters. And then later on, we wanna update the hit points uh, with this stored procedure here. So these are simple stored procedures. And uh, I think this is, okay and sufficient for this little tutorial. If you want to do more, well, please try it out by yourself. Now, first, this controller here, the, the very first method is simply returning the complete list of all characters in the database. So let's start this thing. There it is, one method here with the, uh, the route API character. And this is the example value. And we try this out, hit execute, and we get all the characters, right? So Raceland, Frodo, and Sam. Perfect, but this is not the stored procedure. So let's go back to the database and let's just right click and then create this thing or let's just create the script and here you see it select everything from characters. So really, really simple stuff. And to run this stored procedure now with entity framework core, there is this uh, little method called from SQL raw. All right, so let's just copy this thing here and give this a route this time. For instance, simple SP for stored procedure. And then we also call this get all characters stored procedure because we want to call the stored procedure. Now, instead of simply a to list async, we use the method from SQL raw. And in here now, we just enter the name of our stored procedure. So select all characters and then to list async again. All right, and that should be it. Let me have another look. Characters from SQL raw, select all characters to list async. This actually should be it. So no, Visual Studio don't want that. Let me just stop the application and maybe try to run this one more time. And all of a sudden it seems to work. Interesting. So now here is the second method, character stop procedure. We try this out, hit execute, and it is returning all our characters, right? So this is really, really simple. So I would say we go to the next stop procedure, this thing here, 
let's have a quick look. Here we see we've got this parameter here, the user ID and the actual uh, SQL statement and then is then simply select everything from characters where the user ID is then this user ID here. So let's write the method for that. Again, we just copy this because I'm a lazy coder here. So HTTP get and then uh, let's say we just add the user ID as a parameter and call this then get characters maybe again with the uh, parameter user ID. And then here again, we use from SQL raw and then select user characters. All right, we need string interpolation here or oh, don't need it, but we can use it because we uh, want to use the user ID as a parameter. And if you have more parameters, then you have to separate them by a comma and then this should work as well. And now again, interesting here is that uh, we access the characters here, right? The DB set character. And then we have this function from SQL raw. So this is already something that is uh, limited to entity firma core here. In this case, this, this thing has to return the actual entity then or a list of this entity, right? So if you want to use more complex store procedures, well, they can do anything you wanted would anything you want them to do, but they have to, or they only can return uh, the actual entity even without uh, relations, right? Even without relationships. So if you wanted to include the weapons or the skills or something, let's have a quick look here at the database. You see it here. Um, we've got the, the character, right? But then here, for instance, we've got uh, the weapons with the character ID or the, the, the character skill we're also with the character's ID. So you cannot return that as far as I know, please correct me if I'm wrong, but as far as I know, you cannot use or return these relationships then uh, with store procedures, you would have to use, well, link for instance, to include then the relationships, right? So something like that, got already videos uh, for that on my channel. In this case, we would then say, okay, let me include the weapon and the skills and so on. All right, so this is just a side note. Now here we wanna get the characters from a specific user. So select user characters with the user ID. Let's save that. I have no idea what's going on with Visual Studio today. So let me just stop the app one more time and try to start it again. And here's now the other method with the user ID. Again, we wanna return characters. So let's say we use the user with the ID one, we hit execute and we get two characters, Raceland and Sam. And let's say we use the user with ID two, then we only get one character. This is Frodo. And when we double check in the characters table, here we see user ID one and two, and here also two. Now what had, what, what's actually happening when I try to use ID three? Well, nothing comes back, right? So this, these are the select statements, the store procedures with the select statement. And now the, well, most complicated one, maybe in this example, update character hit points. So let's have a look here. What we can do is we see, we have two parameters now, the character ID and the hit points. And this is actually the statement here or the actual procedure where we just say update characters, where we set the hit points to the hit points parameter where the ID of the character is character ID. And now this is a little bit different because here now we use the method execute raw, uh, execute SQL raw, right? So let's just copy this one more time. It's again a get method where we well, let's just change this to hit points, uh, then the parameter character ID, and then let's just say hit points. And here now what we're going to return is actually just the number of the affected rows. All right, so let's call this now update character hit points with the forgot one bracket here. All right. With the character ID first, maybe you can remove this. 
and then the hit points. And here now we access the database, this is important, and then we get execute SQL raw, async, not async, doesn't really matter here. Update character hit points with the character ID and then also the hit points, all right? And then that should be it. All right, we've got the routes, returning an integer now, the number of affected rows, and update character hit points, the character ID and the hit points, database, execute, SQL, raw, update character hit points is the name of the stored procedure. So let's save that. This time it seemed to work. Got it here and now I am curious if this works. So character ID, let's double check. Uh, we have here, that's our character table, characters. Let's say we've got Frodo with ID five and now he gets 200 hit points. We hit execute and it says one. So one row is affected. Now let's just double check with our store procedure here. We try this out, hit execute and we see Frodo has 200 hit points. Nice. And now when I say ID one, for instance, doesn't exist, we hit execute, execute and we see zero rows affected. Now one more hint about that. When you use the default template here for stored procedures, you see a line like that, set no count on. When you leave it like that, then the, well, we can actually test this, then the method will return um, not the number of the affected rows. Uh, so let's, no, let's just, let's update this. So modify and then here set no count on, hit execute. And when I now send this one more time, execute, see it here, minus one um, for ID uh, one. And let's say now ID five and I set this again to a hundred, hit execute, I still see minus one, but when I get all the characters again, I see it actually worked, right? So this is important. You have to remove this line if you want to see the number of the affected rows, because then we can execute this one more time and then we see, okay, one row was affected. All right, and this is everything. Real quick, EF core with stored procedures, that's it. I will push this to GitHub, although you won't really see the stored procedures, but maybe the code is also interesting for you to just copy and paste it if you're lazy like me. So check out the GitHub repository in the video description. And that's it for this tutorial. Yep, as I said, quick and dirty and really simple, right? Actually, you just have to use these specific methods from SQL raw, execute SQL raw. And with that, you can run your stored procedures with the help of Entity Framework Core. Now, if you learned something and like this tutorial, I would really appreciate it if you click the like button, maybe even subscribe to my channel. And don't forget to uh, have a look at the newsletter to get these tutorials earlier in your inbox and also upcoming online courses like the .NET Web Developer Bootcamp. Maybe this is something for you. And apart from that, maybe you just wanna hang out a little on this channel, then we can become best friends. Check out these videos here on the side. Would really appreciate that. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you so much for dropping by and watching all my tutorials. And I hope I see you next time. Take care.